Mike Parallax here to entertain you with the help of Robbie Dupree. Why don't we steal away? Why don't we steal away into the night? There's an oldie for you. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. I was going to do a comic book reflection video on a more comic I read recently from 1959. And I will still do that. Um tonight or tomorrow, whatever, but uh, um, right now I got a stack of crap I got to get off my chest. <laughs> <sighs> Call it a rant, if you will, but uh, here goes. <clears throat> I know female nature, and I accept it. I will never willfully be a victim of it. This is the very thing that will tick off a lot of low-value females. <sighs> a female will never get cash and prizes from me unless she possesses youth and fertility and gives those to me. <sighs> if I, uh, you know, no relationship, only friends with females, I'm okay with that. That's fine. But only friends forever because I am not willing to be any females what if guy friend so they're either interested in me now or not at all never that uh, friends can be lovers cute song by Dion Warwick uh, has no basis in reality though the desire is for a high quality life partner as I stated in my last video that I posted, thank thank you, God. Thank you, God. You've given me the persona and the ability to entertain myself because I am bored with human beings. I'm just bored with them. In my conversations with God, God told me, Michael, I want you to be single right now because the human world you're in has gone too far out of sync with what I wanted for them. Females fighting for the same respect as males have no clue how to earn respect as females use their uh, strength and femininity to earn respect. They're too busy trying to be males. And when the fecal matter hits the fan, <laughs> yeah, I, I want, God told me, I, I only want, I want you to have, just have to worry about yourself. Until the world is more in tune with God, once the world, does, if that should happen, if that ever happens, the world becomes more in sync with what God, with God, then maybe some earthly prayers will finally be answered. Not just mine, everybody's. And it's, uh, this is just my personal relationship with God I'm referring to here. But in the aftermath, God said, Maybe I'll maybe you know I can answer some of your prayers, but feminism has is, has been an axis of evil in our world for way too long. Modern feminism seems to be preoccupied with convincing the world women can do anything a man can do. Evidence and facts say otherwise, but to evidence and facts, feminism says evidence and facts. What's that? I mean, you're talking to human beings, females, whose lives are dictated by whatever emotion they happen to be feeling at that carefree moment. Is it any wonder they lack direction? Modern feminism is also preoccupied with convincing the world that women are entitled to the same kind of respect as a man. Notice I said same kind of respect, not more or less, just same kind of respect. I'm choosing my words carefully. I found myself recently contemplating uh, the whole, what if God is a straight up self-loathing female? <laughs> that would explain feminism and what it has done to the modern woman. <laughs> that would explain it. And now a word on grape fantasies. <laughs> Speaking in code now. Yes, I believe there is something inherently natural about grape 
about great fantasy. That is the physical healthy male's desire to physically overpower and take a female for mating purposes. It's, uh, it's natural. By definition, it is natural. Just like it is also inherently natural for a physically healthy female to say, see you around, Charlie. <laughs> frame my mom always used. <laughs> to a male who, who is not providing comfort and protection for her and the offspring. That is also inherently natural. Nature will always provide balance. It's human beings that try to sway the pendulum in their favor. Problem with the modern world is 90% of females are too busy with their uppity attitudes and um, competition with each other <laughs> to be uh, uh, appreciative and content with a good man who works his ass off to provide those very things. Hyper hypergamy is justified in nature. You know, it's like, oh my god, I'm pregnant with this loser's child? What have I done? <laughs> there is a and an inherent na natural n nature about it. Now, of course, in the civilized modern world, no real man engages in this kind of behavior for real. That's why God invented the human imagination, fantasy, and safe and sane role-playing. The point I'm trying to emphasize is feminism's and its marriage to corporate greed and its role in its role in the total destruction of male female relationship dynamics chivalry and romance is dead and feminism is its execu executioner modern feminism is romance and chivalry's executioner the, the dynamics between uh, ma men and women would be better when uh, uh, females accept the fact that they need to learn how to F the violence and aggression out of a male, and a male needs to accept the fact that he needs to learn how to F the drama and chaos out of a female. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I need. A woman who can F the war and the, the violence and aggression out of me nightly and accept my uh, ma masculine leadership and let me f the drama, confusion, and chaos out of her every night. Every every night. That'd be good for society. But extreme modern feminism is all over our soy society. It's like in expressions like "Oh, a face only a mother could love," or "Oh, a mother's uh, only a mother's touch or understanding," as if there's something inherently holy about motherhood. And society has no business questioning it. This also goes to the heart of the reason why I despise, despise male feminists. They want the easy, short-term way to get females to want to be with them. They don't want to have to work for it. A real man is a real man for, them, for himself. Because that's nature. And females are drawn to that. Whether they outwardly admit it or not. <laughs> Some females are too thoroughly mind-graped by third-wave feminism to see it. But uh, being more of a gentleman is ideal, but femini femininity does not respond to that. There exists a contradiction between what a female says they want verbally and what they, in fact, pursue. Of course, there'd be those out there that are, you know, with the uh, pers the persona of uh, of the my interpretation of reality, they'd be like, no, no, that's not true. You're an evil person for pointing this out. No, the world is like the movie Frozen. <laughs> I never seen that movie, but <laughs> and it is thanks to so many females giving in to the guidance to male feminists. That has led to self-delusion that amounts to now what we've seen in our world today, mass delusion. Another great gift from modern feminism. Thanks a lot, feminism. And uh, thanks to feminism, modern females, they don't know how to cook. They don't know how to clean. 
a real man doesn't need them for that anymore. <laughs> we've we've learned to get by without them, as far as that goes. The only thing a modern woman seems to be good about good at is uh, talking about what hot stuff they are and how there's no good men worthy of her golden. You fill in the blank. You say making the man who provides a sandwich or cooking him a hearty meal is belittling and degrading to you as a female? Well, you know what? Buying flowers and opening doors for you has become belittling and degrading to me as a man. And I ain't going to do it. Pick up artists and dating coaches talk about this on, on, on social media a lot. Um, it's even, you know, the, the big town movement and everything. And these men, preach, they preach the same philosophy. The, the male... Uh, pickup artist and versus the female pickup artist, they're both pre preaching the same philosophy. So I ask, what's the, what's in the future for a truly masculine man and a truly feminine woman? If dating comes down to who caves first, I mean, what's the point? I'd rather be the be the lone wolf in life. And if a man does go what they call monk mode, it's it's only temporarily and it's for self improvement. An alpha male does not do this just to become a Captain Seva, you fill in the blank. He does this for himself and the potential of life with a high-value female. Be, wearing, be weary of aging has-been female feminists who think they are such. Remember, the blame game is the beating heart of modern feminism. The, I've said this before on, 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 on a video, but the blame game is the beating heart of modern feminism. Uh, presidential hopeful Joe Biden uh, said uh, a quoted uh, a poem called The Cure at Troy by uh, Seamus uh, Hintz. Hintz, H-E-A-N-C-Y. Um, the Irish poet, uh, the poem called "The Cure of Troy." I am not voting voting for Joe Biden. I do not. I am not convinced. I am convinced the Democratic Party does not have the best interests of the country and the legal citizen in mind at this point in history. But uh, I did like this poem that he shared from this uh, Irish poet. History teaches us not to hope on this side of the grave. But then once in a lifetime, that long forward tidal wave of justice rises up and hope and history rhyme. The fall of modern feminism comes to mind. In my life, until about a year ago, I lived as though the day would come when at some point a human being would somehow come into my life that possessed truly feminine strength and virtue and I'm not talking about the 90% of females who think they're all that and more. Now, no, now knowing what feminism, what the feminist uh, gen duh, has done to this soy society that I must live in, I know now the chances of such a thing happening to me are slim to none. Slim to none. So in going forward, the best course of action for me... <laughs> is to only concern myself with my own well-being and to make sure that uh, my my last life's dream comes true, at least. my own The only dream I have left in life. And that is to, uh, get to the, make it to the end of my life without ever becoming a ward of the state. Like both of my sisters are. After a life of crime, what my father is, a ward of the state. And now that her health is failing her, she worked all her life, but now that her health is failing her, what my mother is now, a ward of the state. To me, to be a ward of the state in any country on this planet would be hell on earth and would be the only reason I would ever again contemplate suicide. Yep, the American dream was bought and sold to the highest bidder a long time ago. John Lennon, there is room at the top, they are telling you still, but first you must learn how to smile as you kill. Okay, the old kill or be killed concept. Same philosophy, just a different era in, of human history. And with that, 
I want to play around a little bit with a John Lennon song I was playing around with called Ear Blues. Yes, yes, I'm lonely. Wanna die. Yes, I'm lonely. Wanna die. If I ain't dead already, you know the reason why. My mother was of the sky, my father was of the earth, and I am of the universe, and you know what it's worth. <laughs> My eyes, the worm they lick my bones. I feel, feel, feel so suicidal. I'll do a better cover of it at some point. <laughs> Year Blues. He played it on a Rock and Roll Circus, which was uh, before MTV existed. It's something that a lot of the popular bands, Rolling Stones, was involved in. Yoko ruined it. <laughs> this guy is playing this beautiful violin. And, and I think George Harrison is doing it on guitar. And um... <clears throat> Hey, speaking of George Harrison... Oh, yeah, this is from Cloud Nine. Somewhere else. It's all called Somewhere Else off of Cloud Nine. 1987. That's the one that had the song everybody loved. Uh, Got My Mind Set on You. <laughs> some other videos I'm going to be doing. I want to do a film reflection on the uh, movie Dead Zone with uh, Christopher Walkins. I want to do a comic book reflection on that 59 uh, War comic that I read recently. So I'll be getting some content out there. Especially now that I figured out this energy issue. This energy crisis. <laughs> a very personal energy crisis. <laughs> but, uh, yes. There's a the they got a the equation needs to be balanced between caffeine, vitamin B, and atmosphere. <laughs> but uh, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionalist. I'm just uh, call it as I seen it by the only teacher that I've really uh, benefited from, the teacher of trial and error. I want to. See how long because uh, the S my SD card is almost full on here, so I want to see if it stops on its own. It's kind of like what I used to do when I was a kid with the end of a VHS tape. <laughs> Here's the lead, a little bit of the lead from uh, Ordinary World by uh, um, Duran Duran.
that's not a good song for this guitar. <laughs> of that uh, Lifehouse song, uh, Hanging by a Moment. Take your refuge. 
Check out some of these uh, other YouTubers, especially these uh, young people, and it's some of their content. I when I'm watching it, I'm thinking, you know, if YouTube had existed, had, had only existed when we were kids, we would have totally been doing stuff like this. Is the the poor kids? You know, they, they get on there, and obviously they're struggling to, you know, uh, you know, because they haven't really lived a whole lot of life. <laughs> Even when we were kids making those audio tapes, um, <clears throat> we would always kind of resort to uh, stuff that we saw on TV or try to mimic it. Uh, I know one example is uh, the Hurley Boys uh, uh, house sitting service from SNL. Uh, Chris Farley and um, Adam or Adam Sandler. Well, we took that sketch to the next dimension. On our audio shows, we would do the Hurley Boy shoe shining service and the Hurley Boys uh, TV repair service, and we just took it. And basically, it was just me, you know, acting like Chris Farley, basically. <laughs> but uh, that's what I think about when I see some of these young people on YouTube. All right, I guess I should put an end to this one. Um, it's, I don't know. There might be enough for another half hour video, but like I said, my SD card is almost full and I was kind of hoping that maybe I'd fill it up this time. Um, but eh, maybe not. But uh, I'd hate to like start the next video and then only to be in the middle of that video and have me run out of space on the SD card. But anywho, um, I suppose I suppose I should end this one start my day but uh <clears throat> so i'll end this one uh with a thought that was that uh i was thinking about and see if this uh might uh strike your curiosity but the first time one sees or hears the story romeo and juliet they go ah that's romantic then the second time you see or hear or read it you go Jesus Christ, those poor kids. <laughs> I beat my alarm clock. I don't know if you could hear that. <laughs> <laughs>